Good day to everyone. Welcome back to Every Day's Wisdom from the Gospels. This is your pastor, Yeti. Welcome to the stranger. Welcome to the seeker. Welcome to everyone. In Mark 14, 34, Jesus is saying, then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. And before I go further, I encourage you to print it in your mind and heart that you are chosen. You are blessed. You are loved with an everlasting love. Tour guides in Jerusalem may show you three different sites on the Mount of Olives where Jesus met with his disciples. Which one, if any, is a genuine one? And that is not important. A better question is, what was Jesus doing there? And what does it mean to the church today? Three images in the text help to answer those questions. The first image is that of a garden. Jesus was on his way to Calvary to die for the sins of the world. And sin first entered the human race in the garden. Genesis 3. God had provided our first parents with everything they needed for life and happiness. All they had to do was obey his will. But the first Adam disobeyed God and plunged the human race into sin and death. While the last Adam, Jesus Christ, was obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Philippians 2, 8, and 1 Corinthians 15, 45. Jesus was buried in a tomb in a garden, not far from where he died. John 19, 41 to 42. But the garden where he prayed was called Gethsemane, which means olive press. And that speaks of suffering. My heart is breaking. It almost kills me. Heaven is a garden city. But had Jesus not experienced Gethsemane and Calvary, we would have no access to heaven. This leads us to the second image, the cup. In scripture, drinking from a cup means accepting what has been ordained for you. Sometimes it is a cup of blessing, and another time is a cup of sorrow or even judgment. The cup the Father prepared was for Jesus a cup of agony, but for those who have trusted him, a cup of salvation and blessing. Jesus prayed that if it were possible, the Father would remove the cup from him. But he added, nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. No matter what was in the cup, it was mixed by the Father 
and Jesus willingly drank it. He knew that the prophet Isaiah had predicted the sorrows of his life and death. He is despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrows and acquaintance with grief. Isaiah 53 verse 3 Jesus did experience joy, but his life was predominantly one of pain and sorrow, especially during his arrest and his six hours on the cross. He not only experienced sorrows, but he carried our sorrows to the cross. And surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Any cup that was must, that we must drink, he has already drunk. And can give us the grace we need to go from suffering to glory and from the cross to the crown. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. John 16:33. We are those who are sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. 2 Corinthians 6.13 The third image is sleep. Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him to the place of prayer. But instead of encouraging him in his trials, they went to sleep. Sleep in scripture is one picture of spiritual lethargy. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober and do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. There is a despaired need, a desperate need for spiritual vigor, an alertness in the church today. We lack the excitement and enablement of the church, of the early church. We need to be filled with the spirit and to focus on prayer and the ministries of the word. Jesus is interceding for us in heaven. While we are sleeping here on earth, it's one thing to have spiritual rest and quite something else to suffer from spiritual lethargy. Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming. In the evening, at midnight, at the crowning of the rooster, or in the morning. Last, coming suddenly, he finds you sleeping. Mark 13, 15, at 35, I mean to 36. Let us be awake. God lives around us in the deepest of our soul, in our church. Let us be aware that He, our Christ, finished His work and offered us freedom. with a life that shows there will be struggle, there will be pain, there will be joy, there will be happiness. But in the meantime, he prepared everything.
watch. Be watchful. May the peace of God be with you and stays with you. And may his light shine upon you and keep you safe. This is your Pastor Yeti. I wish you a very wonderful, joyful day. Bye-bye.